All right, brother, Dark Fire Slide. Just wanted to throw you a quick video and uh, show you the expansion I used for LA Yamon. Uh, basically, the methodology that I used was a bunch of cavalry mixed with Ashigaru because these guys hit hard enough to take out heavy infantry. Cavalry hit hard enough and were fast enough that I could play them. So if I was going against a heavy cav, I'd have the Ashigaru eat the charge and I would have the cavalry run around and target the commanders. Whereas if I was fighting an ordinary force like militias, archers, and light infantries, I would have them lined up like like so, where I would have holding attack closest, and I would have holding attack closest here. So what would happen is these guys would run forward and meet right about here, just as these guys were getting right here and smashing into their side flank and taking them out. And I also, turn one, I bought two assassins, and I ran around and I claimed this province, this province, and I believe this province and this province with assassins only. The tortoise I went with is way the hell over here now. He has just been running rampant through everybody, slaughtering everything. And the script I basically did for him was I left him at base turn one to recruit or uh, research enchantment one he got almost there he was like nine points off and then every turn after that i like i said in the comments earlier the master shugenja it's a one turn 13 research mage that's pretty powerful battle mage when they spawn in they're really good most of them with the earth twos and the nature twos are good the air randoms will be able to make you owl quills but i've been pumping these guys out like mad which as i mentioned before in dominion six you don't really do as much i've found with this nation it's possible i got started because i forgot to click build castle with this guy early. I got this province turn two, the tortoise. I basically have built build rock walls, build rock walls, build rock walls. You could flood. This is a random map and I got virtually the worst random map layout. Cause if you look before it was frozen, I had a throne here, which I took, couldn't go here. Could go here, here, here. This was cavalry, cavalry and heavy infantry and crossbows. This was blocked over here. This was blocked over here. There was no way to get off my little crappy island here. So I had a total of five provinces I could take until I took over a throne. So even with the worst possible expansion set up on a randomly generated map, I still managed to expand out. And what did I get this turn? So I have 21 provinces already, including having to take a throne because it was just in my way. And this was a Pegasi and Crystal Priestess province that had air elemental summons, which were absolutely annoying. So I got virtually one of the worst starts you could get, but all I did is my principles for expansion was I had a tortoise. I didn't expand into any hard provinces with him. I expanded into easy water provinces like Triton's Triton Guards until I unlocked Enchantment 2. And then what I did, since he starts with a base cold resist of like 15, and then I, you know, take water so I get 10 more cold resist, I put him to cast Breath of Winter to freeze everybody out around him because otherwise he doesn't have a real good way to kill anybody. And then I started researching conjuration so he gets summon earth power just in case he got fatigued by anything or whatever but he has for my bless i took a really simple magic weapons to make my sacreds decent later on and reinvigoration 2 for my mages or the reinvigoration 2 makes his encumbrance balance out well experience bonus but normally his encumbrance is two and i took reinvigoration 2 so he has perfect fatigue theoretically and he has cold resist so unless it's super hot he's not going to fatigue out so i made my dominion have cold dominion i have two productivity two cold and one misfortune with only four dom strength. And because sacred recruitment, since you only have recruit in capital only sacreds that aren't really that special, I didn't really want to focus on them too much. So I wanted to take it for my mages because some of the mages you can get underwater are pretty beefy. And I really just didn't need anything for my bless. The key to him was taking four water, three earth to get that bonus protection. That extra three made a big difference. When I tried him without three earth, wasn't worth it. Didn't work. He, 22 protection, he was getting something. I'll tell you what. There were a couple battles where even with his 25 protection, he was getting hit by militia that were doing 17 damage to him. I had a couple rolls where the militia rolled 35 or higher on their damage random number. And it was absolutely ridiculous watching that happen, but he survived and punched through. And I've done this expansion four or five times with the same result over and over and over, which is what I think is important for an expansion. I, this is one of the best examples because I have just basic armies of basic Ashigaru. I think these guys were the key because they do a lot of damage. This is heavy infantry protection in late age. So even against heavy infantry, these guys are thumping pretty hard and you can get so many of them that they're actually repelling, which seems to keep them alive a lot longer than you think. The thing I had to do though, anywhere you see crossbow heavy infantry, crossbow he archers and militias are fine. Crossbow heavy infantry like this, crossbow heavy infantry or heavy cav and light cav archers or anything with a really tanky, crossbow heavy infantry, anything with a really tanky troop that can hold your Ashigaru up and then you get hit by crossbows will annihilate you. They'll kill your tortoise 
Paris, they'll kill your main army, they'll kill your cavalry, they'll kill everything. So that's what I did is I danced around and avoided them, took over the water the best I could, and just did the best I could with such a poor setup. And I still managed to pull off 21 provinces. And again, unlike everybody else seems to on guide videos, I don't go to turn 13. I go to turn 12, early spring, turn 12. So I've really only, if you don't count turn one as an expansion turn, you have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. You only have 10 turns on my expansion. So in 10 turns, I managed to pull 20 provinces besides our capital out of it. So I'm getting two provinces a turn. And if I had land up here, land down here somewhere else, I could have expanded down this way. Like in a map nuke map, I would have had land all this way. Would have had another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight provinces I would have been able to snag clear over to here. I would have created more armies. But as it was, I only needed three total armies, including my tortoise, because there was really just with the map geography, there was no way to expand otherwise. However, once I finish this, I'll get shark warriors and I'll be able to, this is a good start. I really didn't find a problem with it. So I would recommend going with that awake expander, the tortoise, getting yourself magic weapons because you won't need a ton. But if you have magic weapons on troops with these stats for high protection enemies and these stats for high defense enemies, you'll be able to counteract anything early game that really could hurt you pretty well, it was especially with this mage core backing you up. And it makes it pretty easy for you to expand and get it going. Hope that helped, brother. Let me know. All right, brother. And real quick before I go, we were talking about Yamon being nerfed in the past. And this is why I designed the tortoise this way, because this way you have something that benefits your mages, at least your Ryujin later, gives you an answer to any ethereal blesses or spell casts early to keep you from getting rushed down. Nothing super negative, so you can actually profit pretty well in the long term, but you need these resources. And one of the problems with the classic Yamon expander, the Earth Snake, is he comes with sloth scale one. There's no way I could make this better. I tried expanding with the snake and his expansion was not better than the tortoise if you were just careful about where you went. Obviously, it's a little better if you attack the same provinces over and over, but it's not if you consider the fact that he gives you sloth. And if you look at your basic troops, this is a troop loaded nation. You need resources. You need productivity. And going from two productivity down to a maximum of one was just too punishing, man. So that's why I didn't try it out. So best of luck with that, my friend.